um, yeah, well, you introduce you yourself and explain. Okay, um, that's American Board of Anti-Aging Health Practitioners. That's A4M. Okay. Um, the segment AAOT is American Academy of Ozone Therapy. Oh, nice. With Dr. Frank Schallenberger, who's up your way. I, right. I don't know if he's retired. Frank still. No, no he's still around. Okay. Um, then it's International um, Association of Compounding Pharmacists. Oh, damn. Okay. And Society of Cannabis Clinicians. Nice. Dr. Dustin Sulak's group. Uh, he's out of Maine. Yeah, he's one of ours. He's one of us, too. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's right. I remember you mentioning that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And then and then at the bottom, right, Prism Earth, it, we make um, what we what we term canaceuticals. They're cannabinoid based pharmaceuticals with, as you know, you know, I've, you heard this before, Joel, uh, amino acids, homeopathics, herbs, other supplements um, for targeted therapy. We're just not the people that throw CBD out there, slap a label on it and go, hey, it's good for everything. Okay. So we're a little more specific. So let me just say, Dr. Robert Quinn, wait, uh, Quinn, thank you for coming. And um, uh, this looks like it's going to be uh, pretty exciting here. So, okay, good. Okay, if you're ready. So, take take it away. Okay, so now on this slide thing, where do I click? Just anywhere? Um, at the, well, you try you can try the either return or down bottom bottom left. There's usually oh gosh right there that right here over here. Like, uh, where, what? The, 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 the far left yeah at the bottom far left second, there's second, a second one but no keep going right there well there it is okay perfect okay so in general um this is a program and this is a piece of the program that we developed starting in 2010 at our our compounding pharmacy and regenerative medicine center we had um over the years over probably about 25 different practitioners physicians do's um anybody and everybody in there chiropractors all kinds of people in a regenerative medicine center and so um over time we developed this program that have to do with the seven pillars and these are the seven pillars that we um, profess to, and also we have been able to actually help practitioners set up their practices uh, based on this. Most of the successful people were endocrinologists or somebody like that who are looking to branch out a bit, do something a little differently or, and add to their practice with an eye toward wellness. And, and that's what we had been doing for all of these years. So that's why you see a lot of the Kohana achieving balance that's, that's on the slides. So we'll go ahead with that then. And then notice in the, uh, in the capitals or the bolder or the larger print is, is diet, which we don't call diet anymore, right? It's, it's healthy and appropriate food choices. Okay, now um, this slide, and can you see this completely well here? Yes. Okay, uh, now this is what the patients think. And this is what I talked to people about. And I said, you know what? You aren't responsible for any of this. You've been bitten by the various bugs. And you can see the diabetes bug and the IBS bug. And, and that's what happened to you. It had nothing to do with your diet. These things flew by you when you weren't looking. And, and you, this is how you got sick, okay? Just a, a little insult there for everybody. And then it, the cancer one is my favorite because it's got all these different tentacle looking things and that's all the different kinds of cancer. Okay, so that's what happened to everybody. Um, now, when we get into the food choices or the diet, I always you know, ask people, well, what, what's the best diet? There's so many, the Mediterranean, keto, South Beach, paleo, act, whatever it is, all right? And so, well, then I said, well, what's the best haircut? What's the best hairstyle? You got choices there as well. And of course, there is the same answer. There's no single hairstyle that's right for everybody. And there's no single diet that's right for everyone. And I always say to people when they say, oh, you, you got to do the Mediterranean. You got to do the paleo. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I said, you know, I can't tell you what the percentages are, but I do believe that there's a large percentage of whatever benefit you are achieving due to the things that you stopped eating, 
right? That I think is, is the main key. When, when you stop eating the sugars and starches and all that kind of stuff, and you eat healthier food, uh, it, it's, it's, it's highly attributable to what you don't eat. But there are the five truths here that we talk about, and it, organic is, is the best way to go. It, it, it beats what's next. I mean, it's not perfect. Um, the sugar, I always call sugar and, and HFCS, I call those environmental toxicants because that, that's what they are. They're, they're, they're just like, like arsenic or something like that. They come from the environment and we um, end up with those in our bodies. Now, the difference between a toxicant and a toxin, a toxin is something that nature made and a toxicant is something that man made. And of course, we stay away from gluten, GMO foods, and then portion size is a silent enemy. Over the years, I've had people that I've consulted with that just struggled. And, you know, uh, all these people are very serious. They want to keep a food journal. And then when I realized that they were eating kind of decently, and I realized, oh, my God, the amount that they were eating was just incredible. And, and no one wants to talk about that, right? They're eating until they're full. And that's just the silent enemy. And then since the foods are nutritionally devoid, we must, we must take uh, supplements. And then you see at the bottom, otherwise the current American health care, that's not spelled incorrectly. What I tell people is we've almost completely eliminated the word care from health care. And it pumps you full of drugs. And then you start circling the drain. There's just a hard path to get out of there. Okay. And I like this one. Procrastination is a thief of health. And, and every year, as you know, I mean, it's the most popular New Year's resolution there is, right? Now I'm going to go on a diet. And then over 90% of the people, and it's well over 90% of the people, they just discontinue it. But there's a study out that shows 75% of Americans understand that obesity is a lifestyle issue, right? It, it's not a disease. This shocks me. 63 plus percent of Americans are overweight and 35% are um, obese. We, we understand there's a problem, but we don't do anything about it. And of course, this leads to chronic diseases. So um, in order to serve our patients, and we all kind of have the same goals here, we have to be compensated, but we kind of have to stay away from insurance in some cases, some cases you don't, um, and then maybe stay away from state aid, Medicare, whatever like that, because uh, they tend not to... Uh, reimburse or want to reimburse you for your time when you're getting people healthy. And then I found this thing, right? And the Medicare guidelines, a treatment plan that seeks to prevent disease, promote health, prolong enhanced quality of life or therapy that is performed to maintain or prevent deterioration of a chronic condition is not medically necessary. That's what the Medicare guidelines say. So, and they're right. If you don't have a diagnosis, you cannot enter the American healthcare system. I will say that I believe there are a lot of people that put undue pressure on to our doctors. They want them to be something other than they are and get irritated and disappointed uh, if they don't come through for them. Um, I have sat face to face with my mother-in-law's oncologist who said to me, what does diet have to do with cancer? And I got up and walked out. Okay, so we are putting undue pressure on people to, to come up with solutions. And, and that's why I like groups like you know this, where people are a little bit more open-minded and understand there's, there's more to health than what's the, the latest and greatest drug that you see on TV. Now, this I stole from uh, Mark Hyman. Uh, oh, I put Dr. Mary Hyman. That's clever. It's Dr. Mark Hyman. Don't know if you're aware of Dr. Mark Hyman, but he's got what he calls the hallmarks of aging and chronic disease. And we're going to kind of go through all of these kind of quickly, and then we'll get to the meat of the, of the topic as we go. But um, I, I think one of the main things for me is disrupted hormone and nutrient signaling, because we can do something about that with the proper nutrients. Um, and then there's four key nutrient sensing systems that protect us from diseases. And you guys know this, but we'll just hit it a little bit here. There's insulin, insulin signaling, mTOR, AMPK, and sirtuins. And it's kind of funny because all of these came into man when uh, uh, 
the world was a different place. And, and here's kind of the way it used to be. There was food scarcity, um, the profound nutritional density, whether it was plants or animals. We had a lot of natural movement and exercise. We lived in harmony with nature. There were very few toxins. And there were over 200 species of plants that we ate. Now we have four main crops, as you can see right there. Crop subsidies, or they call it crop insurance now. The first one is insulin and insulin signaling. Now we're going to go through this pretty quickly because it's it's stuff I think that everybody kind of knows about. But um, I like to throw in some of these statistics, which um, it says insulin release depends, uh, needs to be consistent. We don't like the spikes, the highs and the lows and the, oh gosh, now I feel great because I had my carb load and my, you know, my, my diet uh, uh, Coca-Cola. Um, and, and that, of course, is going to spike the heck out of you, and then you get the crash in the afternoon. So it, it really depends upon the timing that you eat. And then this is crazy. Traditionally, men ate about 22 teaspoons of sugar per year, and now it's 22 a day and 133 pounds of flour per year. And the, the flood of starch and sugar it damages DNA. Um, and it's kind of funny that we have genes that adapt us to scarcity, but we don't have any genes in us that help us handle abundance. And that's what we have today. We can get food, any kind of food, anytime we want. And nowadays, they deliver it right to your front door. I, I, uh, our hunting consists of getting off of the couch and walking to the front door. And of course, it leads to insulin resistance, cardiovascular disease, and on and on. If you don't believe in the I've been bitten by a bug theory. And then, uh, of course, food's a master controller of health. Right away, well, what's, what's the quick solution? Right? Eat a diet low in sugar and starch. If you can eliminate that, fantastic. You want good quality fats and proteins and a boatload of phytochemicals and fiber-rich fruits and vegetables. And then we regulating mTOR. mTOR is one of my favorite things. Um, the next slide kind of talks about what the heck happened. I, I don't know if you guys know the story of mTOR, but it's extremely interesting. But anyway, it's mammalian or mechanistic target of rapamycin. It's a kinase. It's in, encoded by the mTOR gene. And it's important in regulating the cell growth, protein synthesis, mitochondria, and senescence, of course. Low levels of glucose and amino acids in the blood signal it. And it's kind of it's kind of interesting. Some people, you know, find it, it extremely confusing because sometimes you want it on, sometimes we want it off, and it, it automatically turns on when we exercise, you know, building muscles and creating new proteins. But then we want it off for autophagy, which you know we all know is the little Pac-Man that eats the cells and it's cellular cleanup. Um, constant eating keeps it on. So people that eat breakfast, then eat an after, you know, eat a little snack, then eat lunch, then eat a snack before dinner, then eat dinner, then eat a snack before bedtime. You are flirting with disaster because you, you're going to end up having a bunch of, you know, uh, dead cells floating around in your body that are not going to, not going to be removed. The, the, off periods, you can see some of these diseases that come on, Alzheimer's, atherosclerosis, fatty liver, all of that kind of stuff. Not regulating mTOR. And just real quickly, it was discovered on Easter Island. You may or may not know that. Rapa Nui, that's why it's called uh, target of rapamycin. And the Canadian scientific expedition brought home samples of flora and fauna and dirt and all kinds of things. And this jar of this dirt went to this guy, uh, Sharon Segal, that worked for Ayers Pharmaceuticals. Many of you remember them. I don't even know if they're still around. Um, they were huge. And um, they, he found that it had a really potent antifungal. He found that out because his neighbor had a, a diffuse rash, thought it was a fungal type of rash, and they applied it, and the thing killed it right away. So he called it rapamycin because it was some type of antibiotic type of thing. And then when Ayers closed down, they ordered everybody to destroy all their samples. Well, this guy didn't do that. He actually took a jar home, labeled do not eat, put it in his freezer so his kids wouldn't eat it and left it there for a number of years. And then it came out and they started doing some experiments on it. And they found out that it's one of the most important mediators of longevity. And that um, uh, David, Sabatini, David Sabatini discovered it works on uh, intracellular protein 
called mTOR. It balances organisms need to grow and reproduce with availability of nutrients. And you can see, so that's an ancient type of thing that happened um, uh, millennia ago with, with the humans. Um, and then regulating mTOR and self-cannibalism, beneficial stress or hormesis activates autophagy as can phytonutrients. And now every now and then you're going to see some of these things where I start to come up with some of the nutrients that we want. And keep in mind, I have a bunch of slides here that can be used as reference and, and you'll, you'll be able to tell, um, obviously, when we get to those. And, and that's not a, not a problem for me to share these with you guys. I want everybody to, to understand this. Um, most of these things we've heard about, resveratrol and catechins, you know, epigallocatechin, gallate, the EGCG and green tea. My favorite, my current favorite is berberine and then urolithin A, which feeds um, acromancia, uh, mucinophila, which is the mucus, uh, the, the organism that, that helps produce the mucus on the GI tract. And then the next one is uh, AMPK, activated protein kinase. It's found in every mammalian cell. And of course, again, activated times of good stress, exercise, fasting, or caloric restriction. Um, everybody understands exercise. You know, like, oh yeah, you know, we're tearing down our muscles. I worked so hard. I did some weights. I'm tearing down my muscles, but I got to do that to build them back up. And that's something that people just accept. Well, they don't understand that the same type of positive thing can happen from fasting. And <clears throat> when we talk about energy, right? ATP yields one or two phosphate groups resulting in ADP or, or AMP. It's adenosine di or monophosphate. This we used as energy. And as we use those during, mostly during the daytime, okay, the, the, the dip in energy signals AMPK to, to stimulate cells to produce energy. And then of course, these other things right here. And that's why we need to sleep because of the autophagy. And then I believe that, that these that the um, ATP that has been broken down is rephosphylated phos with the phosphate groups and goes back to the ATP for energy again. And when we don't sleep, we mess up this cycle. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and as we age, uh, the AM, AMPK becomes less sensitive to low levels of energy. It's great when you're a kid. And I think that's why little kids fall asleep anywhere, anytime. Um, and metabolism slows, oxidative stress increases, and autophagy is prevented, and that leads to increased inflammation, um, which uh, is uh, uh, one of the absolute killers. We're all finding this out now if we didn't know that before. I think way back when I was in school, we, we had a professor that all he talked about was inflammation and prostaglandins. We called him Dr. Prostaglandin, um, and it turns out that that guy was kind of ahead of his time. And then we can activate AMPK by eating the right diet. Here we go again, eliminate sugar, and reduce starches. Um, I don't know what, uh, <clears throat> what this group knows about or, or feels about fasting and time-restricted eating, but it's, it's a phenomenal type of thing. And then we can um, fix and improve our lifestyle, exercise, heat therapy, stress management, other things like that. And then we have a whole bunch of supplements that we can take. Now, keep in mind, I'm a big proponent of supplements, whereas I never used to be, but our soils are pretty nutritionally uh, devoid, right? The monocropping is, is killing us. The soils now are not soil. They're actually dirt. Uh, they're putting fertilizers and things on there and all weed killers and glyphosate and all that kind of stuff. So our foods are pretty devoid of the nutrients they once had. So again, We've got some things here that, that people can, can take and use um, to improve their, their AMPK. Um, notice here, well, and of course, you're going you're gonna to see a lot of these things a lot of times. You're going to see berberine, again, my, one of my favorites. Used to be resveratrol. Uh, you're going to see over here uh, on the right-hand side, about five down, tangerines, nectarines, plums, peaches, uh, they have chlorogenic acid, and that's also in coffee and fruit with pits. So chlorogenic acid, if anybody's familiar with Dr. William Lee and his, his studies, um, chlorogenic acid is um, mainly uh, a regulator of angiogenesis. Uh, 
if you it, it actually stimulates angiogenesis in healthy tissue, but inhibit it, inhibits it in cancerous tissue. So eat those fruits with pits. And then sirtuins signaling proteins, and this is old news to, to a lot of people, but you know what, what else can we do? Lower inflammation and oxidative stress. Very, very, very critical for as, as all of these things are, seek out and fix damaged cellular DNA, protect telomeres, makes us more insulin sensitive as you know, the big thing now is uh, you know, insulin resistance. And then um, here's something a little bit different, right? Increase the regular aerobic exercise, all right? And then as sirtuins pathways are activated. Uh, we've got these sirtuin activating compounds or stacks. Um, and then here's some more examples, right? Proanthocyanins from berries. Quercetin which is, is one of my favorite compounds now of all time. Um, it, it, I want to make sure that I talk about when I hit the NAD about what they found out, what quercetin does there. And then here's all these other stuff. I don't know anybody that eats persimmons, but hopefully you do. Um, and then, you know, the catechins and green tea, um, curcumin and all of that kind of stuff. So we're going to see, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to see these things over and over and over. And it's highly suggested that you can find tons of information on what kind of quote unquote diet people can have, but we don't need, again, we don't need to name that diet. We just need to be wise about the food choices that we make and make sure we get some of this stuff because you can't really sit here now, I don't think, and walk into a lab and get a sirtuin level. I, I don't think that exists yet, but uh, I wish if, if it does, somebody tell me. Okay, sirtuins and NAD. Now, the body naturally activates sirtuins through, through NAD, nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, and that's the key to production. And there's just a little thing that talks about NAD and, and what it does, life-sustaining benefits. And then you can see off to the left, longevity mechanisms of sirtuins one through seven. There's probably a lot more now. Okay. NAD is a key to energy production in the cells. Um, obviously the, the arrows here show the positive effect on NAD plus, you know, exercise with Veritol, the stacks, NAD plus production, uh, TRP, uh, nicotinamide, uh, uh, adenine, what is that? NAM, nicotinamide, adenine, I don't know, nucleotide, and, and that's nicotinamide riboside is the NR, um, and then you notice on here where aging and mitochondrial disease and stuff like that uh, inhibit the NAD. Uh, and, and this is a, a clever little slide showing how uh, NAD decreases and what happens as we go. And then these are some of the chronic diseases and things that, that people run into and the causes there. So what do we want to do? Well, while we're treating maybe some critical or acute, well, I'll say treating conditions, whether they're acute or they're chronic nature, we're treating them in a chronic manner with acute type of drugs where we may not be doing the only or best thing that we can do. So it's not a bad idea to, to jump on the uh, the phytonutrients and whatnot that we need to, to help all of this because we obviously need the, the NAD for energy. The thing I was going to mention is this is something I believe that's pretty new that has come out is that the, 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 it's one of those reactions that goes both ways, as you know, NAD to NAD plus back and forth. And the enzyme that stimulates that is actually affected positively by quercetin. So that's just another reason to do that. So, you know, I mean, I take quercetin and bromelain every day, no matter what. I have no allergies. I, I got nothing wrong. Um, it, it's just phenomenal. And then you find out, oh, by the way, it helps with energy. So, I mean, that, that's just that's just fantastic. So dysregulated nutrient uh, sensing is what happens with the decrease in NAD. And you can see all this stuff that happens, right? Mitochondrial dysfunction compromised autophagy and all of that, stem cell exhaustion, cellular senescence, which we all know are cells that are getting old and they're zombie cells, they don't quite die. 
and they go around and they release um, cytokines. And then here's the science of DNA in case we need to, you know, check that out. The source code, at, it's adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine. And now what I think is interesting is that 3% of the DNA makes up our genes, but 97% guides the body and how the genes are used. And when the source code is damaged, we got problems. And then how does the DNA get damaged? Well, they say we get 100,000 hits to our DNA every day. And it's like death by a thousand cuts, right? And how's our DNA damage? Well, UV radiation, environmental toxins and toxicants, nutrient depletion, which you know is kind of the theme of what we're doing here, high sugar processed foods, um, and additional stressors from outside of the body. Um, and then hormone imbalance, which Dr. Clearfield uh, can tell us all about the problems with hormone imbalance. And then balancing the endocannabinoid system um, is also critical. And then telomeres, the caps at the end of the chromosomes. I think we all kind of know about that. I don't want to uh, belabor this kind of thing. But um, as we know, when the cells divide, the DNA unravels and it shortens. And so well, what do you do about that? Because as these things get shorter, that cell just dies but sometimes they don't completely die. They turn into senescent cells, as I mentioned, and those are called zombie cells, and they spew out inflammatory compounds that lead to a shorter lifespan and chronic diseases. So obviously, how do we lengthen the telomeres? Whole food, plant nutrient-rich diet, right? And uh, no soft drinks, I'm sorry. Exercise, meditation, sleep, and even multivitamins have actually been shown to, to help. And then in its simplest form, the DNA, all it does is code for proteins, but everything is made of proteins and the messenger molecules, you know, the hormones, peptides, and all of that kind of stuff. And it, it's amazing to, to realize that there's trillions of chemical signals every second in our body, and every bit of food that we eat sends signals. Um, uh, uh, food or nutrition is... is um, how, how do they put it? It's information. Okay. And then here we, we jump into the um, autophagy part. Caloric intake in the form of starch and proteins activates mTOR and shuts down autophagy, which we mentioned. Um, I think you guys are probably familiar with the sugar and starches that are in excess and they combine with proteins and they cause ages, advanced glycation end products. Um, you picture creme brulee. It's, you know, the, the stuff on the top that's uh, advanced glycation end product. And I think it's funny, they bind to receptors for advanced glycation end products called rages, ages and rages. Okay, and uh, of course, as we mentioned, the, the sugars bind to the proteins. And, and we all know about, you know, in blood, when the sugars combine with hemoglobin, it, that gives us a hemoglobin A1C. It also happens all over the place. Damaged collagen is aging in skin and bones. Glycation in the eyes results in cataracts. Blood vessels stiffen for hypertension, heart failure, kidney disease, and on it goes. Now, our good friend sugar and starch, they shut off all these longevity switches that help us uh, maintain a long, healthy life. It shortens the telomeres, damages DNA, uh, epi, uh, epigenome, mitochondria, microbiome which, uh, you know, the sugars and starches and processed foods kill our microbiome, which then affects the brain. And it accelerates inflammation and hormonal chaos, and then it ages stem cells. So if you pick, if you pick about, if you think about um, epigenetic changes, it, it's kind of the, the example they give it, it's kind of like a, a, a dysfunctional piano player because, you know, uh, you can sit somebody down to a, a piano and they can play a melody and that's health or a cacophony, that's disease. So if you think of the epigenome as a microphone that picks up these signals and sounds of the piano from the environment, so it's either going to pick up nice positive signals or horrible signals, and our DNA listens to all of them, and then too many insults to the body you know, not only from toxins, but things like lack of sleep and, and these things now that you, you hear a lot about lack of, lack of purpose. People, you know, need purpose. I mean, we all have heard the stories about the guy that worked for X amount of years, retired and died two years later. 
just did not feel part of society, did not feel they had a purpose, and, and disease comes on. All of these things um, uh, bring on chronic disease, and the ultimate is, you know, death. And then, uh, of course, the, the, the foods have got preservatives, emulsifiers, thickeners, sweeteners, et cetera. The food industry has hijacked our taste buds by super, super tasty type of foods that we, we actually think are good for us and that we need. And then they, they hit us on TV with all the ads and make you think that that's food. Um, I believe I refer to these things as food-like substances. They're not really food. And then um, uh, apoptosis. And then remember, what we want to do is make sure we don't call it apoptosis. The um, geneticists out there kind of laugh when that's done by us that are supposed to know. It's apoptosis. And some cells um, do not die, as I keep mentioning, because of these zombie or senescent cells caused by DNA damage and all the other things that we talk about, inflammatory diet and our lifestyle. So that's why we go back to those seven pillars of Kohana that it takes, you know, stress management, which, you know, sleep and all of these kind of things that we really need to do, hormone balance, you know, targeted supplementation. And then um, these damaged cells critically <clears throat> shorten these telomeres. And it, it's a major role in all of our popular diseases, right? One big one that I don't say too much about is sarcopenia, which I think we're finding now that um, muscle is the currency of longevity. You have got to build muscle as you age and it's harder to do. And you, you actually need more protein to do that. But that's kind of a cycle. You don't want to take too much protein if you're not exercising enough because you don't want those ages, right? Advanced glycation end products. So it really is a system. People need to uh, embrace many of the lifestyle lifestyle things that benefit their health and, and proper sleep and, and exercise especially is absolutely critical. There are a lot of people out there and a lot of quote unquote experts that are going to talk about fasting and anything you want to know about fasting, if you know who Dr. Peter Atia is, um, this is a guy that used to fast for at least one week a month and realized he was losing all his muscle. And so he quit doing that. And th this guy's pretty doggone hip to all this stuff. And then the zombie cells, again, not to you know belabor it, but uh, I think it's important because if we have these things floating in us, we've got dead cells floating around that are, are wreaking havoc with us. And as these things come on, when you see people coming into the office, They've got the downstream effects of all of these problems, and then we're treating them. It, it, we tend to treat them with, with what we know, with what our societies tell us to do, with what our continuing education tells us to do. And as I, I used to tell people, with continuing education, I think if I see one more diabetes type 2 lecture, I'm going to have to commit suicide. I, I just same over and over and guess what there's a new drug for this and that's that's so downstream so they're working on this and there's a new class of drugs called senolytics that they mimic natural compounds that kill senescent cells and you can see the list down here um don't know if you've heard about this uh, but the Rockefeller Foundation is spending, it, it, it's an estimated $250 million to classify all of these phytonutrients, which is going to be phenomenal when that happens, because we can use this as a reference, which I'm trying to provide here, some of the things that we know about to, to help with, uh, with our health and wellness. And plus, I always say this, if you're treating a patient for diabetes or, you know, and you're measuring the A1C, and you're doing all of these things that you have to do because that's why they came there, they're ill. It's not, I don't feel it's a case of treat it and run. I think it's a, a case of treat and modify to be able to get that person healthier as opposed to, you know, saying, well, you know what, you, you need a statin. And if, if that one's got side effects you don't like, we got five or six more to choose from. So come back in, you know, three weeks or a month and we can switch you up. And, and that, 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 that's, that's just not 
my idea of helping people to the max. I think you you can help them in an acute fashion, but hey, we need to do more nowadays. And I think people that think like, you know, the group here kind of understands and can embrace some of this stuff. There, there's nothing in here that I'm going to say that's going to get anybody in trouble or it's not going to help. Right. And that's the two things that we sadly have to have to watch out for is somebody comes up with standards of practice and no one ever says whether those standards are good or bad. They're just standards of practice that we have to follow. And that's not always the best thing. So senolytics from plant sources, phycetin from strawberries, persimmons, apples, and on it goes, lutein, right? And then, you know, quercetin, onions and apples, grapes, berries, and on it goes, curcumin. Okay, so there are things that people can eat. So as you as you break it down into a more, let's say, practical standpoint, when you're talking to someone, um, you know, stay away from the bag of chips and, and, and you know, train yourself to have some berries, right? A, a, a bowl full of strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, something like that. You're, you're doing yourself a tremendous favor. It, it's just that it, it's so sad that besides people thinking that their, their, their condition is a disease, that a disease means uh, to me, people think it's something that came on that they got somehow and have no control over it. Oh, I've been stricken, right? Well, that, that's, that's not always the case. So we can do something about that as we treat them for other things just by modifying their, their diet and lifestyle. All right, the, the decline, number seven, we got 10 of these, the decline of the mitochondria. Okay, and we know, we all know this. I mean, what I want to do is just kind of jump down here um, to, you know, we talk about oxidative stress and all that kind of stuff, but uh, we want to clean up, rejuvenate old mitochondria through dieting. So eat whole foods, including good fats, limit starch and sugar. I wonder if I've said that before. Okay. Um, also the microbiome supporting uh, polyphenol rich foods, pre and probiotics intermittent fasting or time restricted eating and that doesn't have to be totally radical you know just just some wise choices on when you eat and stop the snacking helps um what i tell people that are just foodaholics it, it's really it, it's kind of terrible because of the food industry and what they've done and hijacked our brains and done all of this it's not like a drug addiction or alcohol addiction where there's a way to put it down there's no way to put food down. We have to have food. We just need much, much better choices. And if we can do that and we can help people do that, we can really help them along. And then other uh, hormetic strategies, cold plunges and showers. That's a whole other topic and lecture. Um, and then, of course, my one of my one of my old time greats is targeted supplementation and then strength training. And here's our favorite Western diet. And here are the features of our Western diet. Low fiber, high processed, ultra processed food, sugar, and high fructose corn syrup. The additives, um, not to mention the pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides that they're subject to. And glyphosate's a weed killer. Don't know if, if anybody ever- You're doing good on this kind of stuff. What's that? Somebody have a question? No, I'll mute, I'll mute her. Oh, okay. Um, don't know if, if you guys know the story of glyphosate. Many people do, where they use it to clean pipes. And the runoff, they found that where it was running off into a vacant area killed all the plants that were there. They said, wait, we got, we got another use for this. Okay. Um, and then gut-busting drugs, acid blockers are horrible. Um, there, you've got to help your microbiome. Now, yes, of course, if somebody has to have it, all right, it's a short-term type of thing, which that's wonderful and it helps, but these are not long-term solutions. The gut ecosystem is linked to almost all chronic diseases. And then if you notice down here, um, I've got a, a I call it powerful paper on food choices. It includes a whole thing on what not to eat and what to eat. 
right? And it, and believe me, it's not meal planning. I, I do not take that on. That is beyond what I do. I mean, yeah, I plan my own meals and I can give suggestions, but I, I, I don't have a, a cookbook or anything like that. There's a lot of information out there that people can use, but if you want anything on what to eat and why, and an expanded version of this entire talk that's not in slide form, it's in printed form, I can get that to you. And that's uh, how you can get me, Robert at KohanaRx.com. And I can get you information. This is, is stem cells. Okay, I just put in there because that's, that's the ninth um, uh, hallmark of aging and chronic disease and the people we see. And then there's just all, all these different things on stem cells, which, you know, we won't get into. Um, <clears throat> and then again, a hallmark of aging, right, is our body's rejuvenation system declines. And, and of course, that happens with um, with aging and all of the other things that you saw there, you know, stress and lack of exercise and environmental toxins and and mold. You know, I don't even go into mold here, but uh, oh my gosh, mold and and heavy metals and all that kind of stuff were just unbelievably nasty. And and one thing I will tell you is just my personal soapbox that I like to get on, which is. I don't believe that we can help people to the max if they're toxic, right? Nothing functions at it full capacity in the presence of toxins. And I know Dr. Clearfield uh, knows well about that. And, you know, the way the heavy metals affect hormones and hormone balance, hormone signaling, um, also, you know, endocrine disruptors and, and all of that kind of obesogens, all of these things, um, are just absolutely uh, uh, killing us. And so the stem cells uh, secrete factors that regulate the immune system, of course, and produce exosomes. And then there's two major types, which I, I think everybody knows about. And then they renew everything. And then of course, down here at the bottom, they increase testosterone and improve insulin sensitivity. Um, eh. Increasing testosterone is critical in everybody, as we all know, it's kind of androgenic. Uh, and, and we do need that, especially, you know, if you listen to somebody like me who totally believes in muscle and building muscle and, you know, uh, BDNF and all of the things that come along with building muscle, um, testosterone helps in that. Um, we like to say that, um, Jesus, uh, they, the, the, the guys that you see with the big bellies, you know, the bigger the belly, the lower the testosterone or the bigger the belly, the higher the estrogen. And we used to talk about in Dr. Clearfield, you'd be the one to know uh, and, and consult on this. But it was my understanding that some years ago, we used to say that um, a 55 year old man can have a higher estrogen level than a 25 year old woman. And then immunosenescence. It's a dichotomous uh, situation, and this is what's crazy. And inflammation, of course, is the fire that drives chronic disease. Um, we, we increase the risk of dying from infection, and cancer dramatically increases as people age. And then, but, and then other parts of the immune system are activated, uh, driving sterile inflammation, which is you know inflammation from things other than infections. So sometimes we want inflammation and sometimes we don't, we, we do need it. You know, you get a broken bone, you get something like that, you know, a cut. Yeah, right. We, we need that, but we don't need the inflammation that are, that's caused by poor lifestyle uh, choices. And then of course, at the bottom, every age related chronic disease, both caused by and causes inflammation in a self perpetuating cycle. And the primary driver of inflammation, what do you think? Modern diet. And there we go. Sugar, starch, low in, low in fiber. <clears throat> I, I apologize for the repetitive uh, uh, sayings, but it, it can't be emphasized too much when we have clients or we have people that we're trying to help and they have a subversive type of lifestyle. Um, I think the sad thing is, you know, all these American attitudes is I'm going to sit on in my favorite easy chair, drink beer and watch football all day on Sunday. And then when I feel bad, I'm going to go to the doctor and I'm going to get a pill that's going to allow me to continue that lifestyle. 
That is what they want to do. People don't want to change their lifestyle. What they think is they can get better with a pill so they can continue doing the harmful things that they do. Um, other causes of inflammation, eight to 5,000 environmental toxins. Um, I believe it's, it's obviously, it's more than that now. I think this is a little bit older. Um, and I, I think at last I heard, we've only evaluated 2,000 or so of these. And these chemists are pretty smart. Yeah, I'm going to have to say that because I used to be one of those. Um, they come up with all kinds of things. We talk about bisphenol A. Now there's bisphenol B and bisphenol S and on it goes. Yeah, BPA free. Right. Well, still, there's other plasticizers. So um, exposures to heavy metals, there's mercury in the fish and dental fillings and lead in the environment. And on it goes. Um when we have file, fires, I don't know if you guys know about that, but California was hit, I guess, last year or whenever it was with these tremendous wildfires. Um, arsenic, mercury are kind of in the top most layers of our soils. And over time on this planet, we have dug those up to build things. And that releases these into the air. When... Um, and they start to fall out of the air when it rains or other things like that. And there's a really nice collection vesicle called forests where these heavy metals land on these trees. We have forest fires. These trees burn and the plume is extremely toxic. It's one of the most toxic things there is, is the plume from fires. Okay. And then, and then also, um, inflammation is driven by psychological stresses or lack of sleep. Uh, we have overworked, underloved culture. And, and again, as I mentioned, lack of meaning and purpose in life. And then here we get under the standard American diet. We've all heard the sad diet. And over on the left is kind of what it is. I apologize for this thing being blurry, but you can see here that 62% um, of our diet is processed foods. And that's, that's horrific. Okay, and then um, and then you can see meats, eggs, and dairy uh, uh, occupy a certain uh, amount. But then we've only got ten percent of the plants and vegetables and the things that provide those phytonutrients that provide information for our entire body. And then whole grains, which we we can have an entire discussion on that. And over here is kind of a new type of pyramid here: colorful fruits and vegetables at the bottom, all kinds of good stuff, proteins. Grains are limited, whereas in the old pyramid, they said, you know, eat eight to 10 servings of grains and pastas and bread and all of that kind of stuff. And then, then we found that since the 80s, our incidence of cardiovascular disease has skyrocketed, right? That and fat-free diets, right? And that has caused a tremendous health uh, uh, detriment in this country. So now I, I believe we're trying to, to change that pyramid. And, and somebody said it happens once every 10 years they put out a food pyramid. And of course, they're bought and paid for. There are food pyramids that come out from countries all over the world. And, you know, it's kind of kind of fun to see what others others think, knowing that we're kind of maybe the worst. Now, here's an anti-inflammatory food list. OK, and this is another one of those things that if anybody you know, if you want, you can print this thing. And in case anybody, you know, comes in and asks you this. If you get into a, a situation where, you know, you say, well, you know, Mr. Patient, what we might do here is, is modify some of your lifestyle things. And we can start with a little bit of, of dietary um, uh, habits, foods that you might want to eat that, that can actually help you out. And then here we go. I, I just have these, these the, the three things that I always say are... Um, uh, free range chicken, grass fed beef, wild caught fish. And the wild caught fish, there are not a whole lot of waters in the world that aren't toxic. I know Alaskan, Norwegian, and they tell me Chilean waters are pretty good. But if you get anything other, if you want to eat salmon, you go to a restaurant, you ask where it's from or what kind of salmon it is. And if they don't say, you know, like, you know, sockeye or whatever, and they say, oh, it's blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's Atlantic. And the Atlantic is probably the most polluted ocean in the world. Don't eat anything out of the Atlantic.
Okay, and then metabolic supplements. And this is an old slide right here, but I thought it was worthy to note that in 2013, $300 billion spent worldwide on supplements. And that that's just not hocus pocus. The supplements do something for us. And then over-the-counter supplements, nutrients. And then what we used to do is customize um, some things for people based on what we saw their needs were. And it also... This type of thing, when you do this, it's cost savings for the patient, but it's also tremendous potential revenue for practitioners. Um, people that feel better uh, tend to tell others. They, they tell others if, if, if they come to you and they don't get better, that's the worst kind. But people do kind of like to share positive health information. You know, whether, you know, a chiropractor or whatever it is. Oh, yeah, my guy's the best, you know, that kind of thing. And when you help an overall type of body as a whole system, uh, they'll tell others. And I'm not saying here that that's the best and only way for revenue. I think for the office practitioner, the best way is ongoing checks and ongoing lab testing when appropriate and interviewing with the patient and, and seeing where they are. But keeping them coming back uh, is probably critical for most people now, I will say, especially Americans, because we tend uh, to want the quick fix and go away and then let it go, just like the New Year's resolution. If you've got somebody that you can monitor and coach and do all of that kind of stuff, I think it's revenue uh, for the practice. And as you know, you guys are the experts here. You're the head of the ship. Um, if this type of thing didn't work, we wouldn't have so many health coaches out there health quote unquote coaches. And I don't want to insult anybody, but to me, no one's a health coach unless you understand that you need to detox your patient. There's only certain things that you can do. You know, you can, you can talk about meditation, which is wonderful. You can talk about a lot of these things and eating good foods. But if you're, you know, if you're, if you're putting fuel into a bad car, a bad engine, uh, it's not going to work optimally. And that's exactly what these people are doing. So um, I, I, again, I think that there's a place for the the guys at the top of the the, the physicians at the top of, of the ship, the commanders that, um, th that can really help people in general as a whole, because you have the ability to do what others do. Plus you have the ability to, to treat acute issues. Okay, here's something fun. This is another one of these charts that if anybody wants, um, you can have this. Um, and, and it's just commonly uh, depleted nutrients here. And then it tells um, uh, exactly the, the problem areas. And then kind of this over here are some of the, the fixes, right? The supplements that that actually help in all of these kind of things. Um, you'll notice on here, I just threw down a couple of them because people say, well, what brand? What about this? What about that? Well, methyl B12, I like the Ready Zorb. You know, those guys are, are pretty good. We've got integrated therapies, pure uh, encapsulations, orthomolecular, and on it goes, right? For people that just kind of want a little little guidance on that. I don't get paid by any of these guys. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, here's some metabolic substances, you know, well, what do they do? Why do you need coenzyme Q10? Well, here's what it does. Here's the function and then potential adverse events. We always got to put that in there in case there's any problem here. Again, now I think we're hitting the charts that we're not going to read word for word, but uh, if you want any of these as reference, feel free. Resveratrol, uh, Resveratrol, and on we go, folic acid, methylcobalamin. And then the, the references on these, you know, in, in case you need to see that. And then now we're, I'm going to hit you with some of these, these charts that, um, that you can have that, once again, that uh, kind of go into phytonutrients, where they come from, and then the benefits. Now, you can cross-reference this because you can go, well, well I, I want some anti-inflammatories. Well, then you look over benefit anti-inflammatory, and you know, you know, zeaxanthin. I can't say that lutein. And then you can also look down here and you go, oh, anti-inflammatory, lycopene. Oh, yeah, eat some tomatoes. 
you know, this kind of stuff, antioxidants and all of that, right? So this chart kind of helps you there. Then there's other ones, isothiocyanate, sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is phenomenal. Anti-cancer types. Oh yeah, it says that right there. Um, Indole-3-carbonyl, I'm sure Dr. Clearfield mentions that in the uh, hormone lecture, which I have not heard. And then here's, here's more. Sure did. What's that? Sure did. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Um, uh, uh, by seeding against strawberries and all that, quercetin, um, grapes, uh, I'm sorry, uh, onions, apples, that kind of stuff. Tells you right here. And then some of these things, I don't know, watercress, they say are great. Okay. Again, these are just, I mean, I got six pages of this for you. Okay, so if there's anything that you want to stop on, you want to take a look at, and we had to throw this in with the coffee. This veritrol, and, and on it goes. Is that the last one? No, there's one more. Okay, omega-3. And then we get into some meal replacement type of things, and the goals of meal replacement shakes. High in protein, low in bad fats, no sugar, fortified, and, and on it goes. And then healthy weight management, and then detox. There are some tremendous things you can put in shakes that are in powder form that will help you detox. So when we talk about detox, um, uh, a lot of times I would say, well, I'm not talking about detox in a box. You get a liver cleanse or something, and, and I think those can be great. Uh, I'm talking about cellular detoxification, where it's it's really hard to get at some of these things, but but oh so critical because it's interrupting all of our cellular processes. And then proteins, balanced amino acid composition, unless addressing a specific uh, nutritional uh, deficit. And so here's some essential amino acids, non-essential amino acids, conditionally essential amino acids, um, and then a little bit more of explanation on these things. Again, if you if you want this as a you know kind of little reference, put in a little notebook, flip chart, whatever you can. Obviously, you can do that. And I'll trip the fan. Okay, now which protein source is best? Ooh, this is a barbed wire topic. It sticks you no matter where you go. Um, uh, it, it it obviously is based on the individual. I mean, some people are going to say, oh, you can't have soy. That, that Dr. William Lee that I mentioned to you, brilliant guy, um, he talks about soy as beneficial. Okay? And you don't hear a lot of that. And then casein, whey protein, which is kind of one of my favorites. Um, uh, uh, organic goat whey is what I use. And there's rice protein, pea protein, and then there's a there's a little quick little summary, way greatest acceptance um, by the bodybuilding market is the way, and then rice, sports nutrition, casein, immune function, and on it goes. And then nutritional smoothies got a little bit of information here. Um, people talk about this. Well, what's the difference between almond milk, oat milk, rice milk? Hey, choices that you can have. Uh, based on the patient's need. And of course, you know, healthy fats, you can put so many things in smoothies is a big thing nowadays, obviously. Um, and then high fiber carbs. I think this is pretty important over here because we don't get a lot of fiber in our diets. And the, now here's some nutritional support for specific needs, diabetes, berberine, I'm going to quick mention berberine real fast here because the studies that are showing, and I can't tell you the exact dosage on this, I think it's like 200 milligrams four times a day, two to four times a day. Berberine has three actions. And I don't know if you guys have heard about they're trying to come up with the, the try something or other pill for people. And they want to put a statin in there, an ACE inhibitor in there, and um, uh, something to help regulate uh, insulin, blood glucose, okay? Berberine, over time, taken consistently, right, will actually outperform statins, outperform ACE inhibitors, and outperform metformin. 
Okay, and these things you can find out there. I've just been recently hearing about this, so I don't have that as a slide. I'm just throwing it out there. If uh, if you have somebody you know with metabolic syndrome or whatever it is, I definitely start up on berberine, and then obviously other things, wound healing and all that kind of stuff. Arginine, blood supply, blood flow. Okay, now. This is something that they asked me, the other group asked me to talk about, which is what I call the Boca salad, right? That's Boca, that's B as in beets, O is onions, C is carrots, A is apples. This is a little video. I'm going to try this again. It's one minute and one second of me rushing through these ingredients. Uh, just in case if anybody cares to have this, I can... Uh, text it to you, email it to you if you care. This is something I will tell you after the video. I go into a little bit about what this does. This is about the only specific food item that I recommend to everybody with a pulse, okay? Everybody, I believe, should be on this. I've got clients where I, I, I tell them about this, give them this, and say, you know, don't, don't go to the cupboard and, and look for chips or something like that. Don't do that eat, you know, a little cup full, bowl full of this stuff. And it's not only satiating, it, it's going to help you beyond belief. All right. So let me see if I can get this to play. If I can't, you know, well, again, I can just send it to you. So let me see here. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Dr. Bob's. Can you hear it? To be famous beet salad. I'll show you the ingredients here. Yes. To make this can you raise the voice? Uh, Fine. 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 How can I? I don't know. Okay. Shredded organic carrots, shredded organic apples, which is my favorite, and then of course an organic onion. Now notice the percentages here or the, the proportions. The, the beets, carrots, and apple are pretty similar, but the onion is about half of that, so it doesn't override the taste of everything. Then I add some onion salt, and I've got some shelled uh, hemp seeds, chia seeds, organic dried cranberries, and pumpkin seeds if you'd like. Also, you can add whatever spices. I've got some um, garlic powder here. And then add it to the whole mix. Balsamic vinaigrette, fantastic. Organic MCT oil, great for cellular energy. And then extra virgin olive oil. And there you have it. Enjoy. Okay, so what's in this thing? What do they do? Beets. Beta lens. Okay. Now, what I tried to do in the beginning up here is um, it, it's got fiber and nitrates and folate and potassium and all that kind of stuff. So I, I started out by going, well, nitrates I made in red and here's what that does, you know, and that kind of thing. But that got a bit uh, overwhelming. So I, I'm just listing these things here, you know, vitamin C, antioxidant, that kind of thing. Quercetin over here on, under the onions. As quercetin, decreased blood clots, good for bronchitis, hay fever, diabetes, asthma, and, and on it goes. Okay, so these are the benefits of the ingredients that are in that salad, that Boca salad is what I call it. Apples are incredible. Oh, and I, I, I should tell you, I, I, I tell people, first of all, uh, I'm not a big fan of beets at all. Uh, and, and I use the yellow beets because the the the... The other ones that, you know, the purple ones is, oh, I can't stand them. Um, and then uh, um, carrots, do not like. Apple, I hate apples. I can't eat an apple. I mean, I have to smother like uh, almond butter or something, although I, I just can't eat. I just don't like apples at all. I can tolerate onions. So now I've got four ingredients that I pretty much don't like. The first time I made this, Oh gosh, I'm, I made like a, a cup full. I said, I, and if I don't like it, I can throw it out and I haven't wasted my money. Now I can't make enough of it because it just has a refreshing, great flavor to it that you go, oh man, this doesn't taste like any of those things. All mixed together with, you know, the olive oil and the, and the vinaigrette and spices phenomenal tasting stuff. The only thing is you got to kind of, when you first make it, kind of play around with the, the amount of oil and vinegar that you use. You don't want to drown it. You know, that's that's not 
the best thing to do. I've been asked how long this keeps. Um, well, for me, to to be perfectly straightforward about it, it uh, it doesn't last very long around me. I mean, I eat this stuff, and and if if I can't figure out something to eat for lunch, this is it. Um, it, it always pains me because it's like, oh gosh, uh, I'm eating so much of this, and I, I consider it like gold, right? Um, but I have had this some of it around for at least two weeks in the fridge and it's 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 just fine it's just if you put too much oil and vinegar it gets a little liquidy shall we say but hey that doesn't stop me i i just go ahead and eat it anyway okay now so here's what all these things also do the mct oil and we, we can't we're not going to go into all of this it's all right here okay medium chain triglycerides. And I'll tell you, basically, if you're able to find this on the bottle, you want uh, eight chain carbons and 10. Okay. Um, and then the dressing and the seeds, extra virgin olive oil. There's 11 proven benefits of extra virgin olive oil. Anti-inflammatory, antioxidants, reduce risk of type two diabetes, fights Alzheimer's. I mean, on it goes. Helps treat rheumatoid arthritis and it's antibacterial as well. Uh, and again, dressing in seeds, the vinegar. There's eight benefits of vinegar. And it doesn't have to be balsamic. Um, I haven't tried white vinegar. I don't know about that. But just nice organic vinaigrette works pretty well. Um, and then apple cider vinegar down at the bottom, ACD. Uh, stimulates muscles to accept nutrients. There is a school of thought that says before you eat your main meal of the day, take a teaspoon, tablespoon, whatever, of apple cider vinegar because it kind of like this, it wakes up your muscles to go, hey, nutrients are coming. And then the chia seeds. And apparently that's what they look like. I thought that was lavender. Okay, fights heart disease, bone nutrients. I mean, all of this stuff is just so fantastic. Hemp seeds, six proven benefits. And, and understand this, that there are no cannabinoids in hemp seeds. Don't know if you knew that. And then here's what I say. Okay, so here's a, a cute little slide. Detoxification products, healthy nutrients, supplementation, physical activity. You're pouring it all in here to build the perfect beast. Remember, health is not the absence of illness. Okay. And then depuration is, is getting the garbage out of you. And now you're building that perfect beast. All right. Now, here's pearls of wisdom. I love this. Avoid the killer bees. Bags, boxes, and bottles with barcodes. Stay away from that. And then I put sometimes bread, you know, A-E-I-U, sometimes Y. Okay, sometimes bread. Um, I haven't had a piece of bread in two years. It, it's just, we just don't need it. And then when they talk about, oh, the Ukraine and, 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 and the wheat and all of that kind of stuff, and my sick thought is, who cares? We don't have to have wheat. We don't have to have bread. If God made it, eat it. If man made it, don't. Here's a note, you're eating what you ate, ate. So if you eat feedlot cattle, um, I, I'm sure many of you have heard that, that, that they eat ground up anything and everything, chicken feathers, whatever can get in there. They fatten them with Skittles. Don't know if you know that. And then they have this thing where they can put testosterone pellets behind the ear of cattle to fatten them up to get some extra muscle before slaughter and the way the food industry has gotten it is that does not have to be done by a veterinarian that can be done by a rancher okay so you are administering a controlled substance to an animal and you don't need any training and then the food industry doesn't care about health and the health industry doesn't care about food they're mutually exclusive, and yet they benefit each other. Uh, I guess that's it. Okay, so any comments, questions, anything? 
We have a bunch of questions and comments in the chat there. There's only 16 of them. Well, some of them are uh, comments and whatnot. So, so Dr. okay. So Dr. Cindy writes, health CA is health cancer. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if there's a, any comment you need to make on that one. You know, may, maybe after that, I'll, I'll put an R in there. <laughs> uh, um, what do you think of Fisetin? 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 Fisetin. Oh, yeah. I kind of I, I covered a little bit about that. that. That's phenomenal stuff. Phenomenal. From, from strawberries. Yeah. Besides, you know, antioxidant and all of that, the polyphenol groups that are in strawberries and things like that are fantastic. I mean, that's on one of the slides there on all the benefits that that stuff has. I don't know if I, if I covered that. Uh, what food increases NAD? Um, quercetin. It actually, NAD mostly, right, is um, going to help us with the energy. And that's where it's mostly increased by, quote unquote, lifestyle to where we, you know, get better sleep and exercise manage our stress, you know, that kind of thing. Um, connect with the world, connect with others. I tell people, connect with a dog, whatever you do, you know, don't isolate yourself. That's, I mean, they've got studies out that say people in isolation live eight years less than others, you know, that kind of thing. But as far as foods go, quercetin is the thing that stimulates that enzyme producing, and, and I believe it's the NAD plus, but don't quote me on that because of that reversible reaction. Oh, you're forever going to be known for that. You're, you're in trouble now. For for what? For uh, NAD plus. Oh no. <laughs> okay. it, I mean, as you know, I mean, we could go off be, on a tangent on any of these things. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be in the misinformation hall of fame. Oh God. Oh God. Um, question from Dr. Zinni: Isn't soy estrogenic in guys? In guys, you know. <laughs> Man, that's another one of those, as they call it, barbed wire topics. You're going to find information that says, oh, yeah, oh, uh, soy, all soy is estrogenic. Um, men, women, you know, stay away from that. I, I can't tell you how many people we all run into uh, that say, oh, I, I can't, I'm not taking any soy. But I, I'm going to tell you, Dr. William Lee, uh, last name spelled L I, brilliant guy. Uh, if you look up him, he has got, uh, I wonder if I have his book sitting here. He's got the, the best information on soy that I've ever seen. And he's a big proponent of everyone using it. And I, I was like completely shocked. It, it, it's, it's a controversial topic. Okay. All right. Um, what's the difference between intoxicants, toxicants, and microtoxicants? And, well, well, toxic and microtoxicants are just going to be those tiny little things that that we that we make, which would be um, additives in drugs or microtoxins. I mean, we've got fillers, diluents, and binders in capsules. Those things are are pretty much micro. The other the other toxicants would be, you know. Um, Oh, gosh, let's say um, uh, paints with VOCs, the volatile organic compounds, those would be toxicants. Um, the mastic that is used to stick carpeting down, that's a toxicant. Um, uh, anything that you get that's wrinkle-free, wrinkle-free shirts, sheets, formaldehyde is what they use to get the wrinkles out. I mean, you know, we, we can go on and on. I hate ironing. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I tell people? I said, look at, go to Target. They don't pay me. Go to Target and buy organic sheets because you are sleeping on a toxic dump. Right, the stuff that they put in sheets is incredible. And in case you, in case you don't know about the mattress industry, you can have mattress manufacturers can have virtually any percentage of any organic compound in there, and they're allowed to call it an organic mattress. Um, flame retardant was really big and started in California due to a fraud case 
where a guy said a house burned down and there was a seven-year-old boy who died in the fire because his bed caught on fire. And he was a mattress manufacturer and he's in jail for this, but the law still stands. You've got to have flame retardant in beds when the, the ultimate flame retardant is wool. We're, we don't get wool beds anymore, but if we did, uh, we wouldn't need any flame retardant. Is it, isn't it in uh, like children's uh, pajamas and stuff also? Oh, yes. Yes, exactly. And in, in their toys. Mm -hmm. In fact, they, I, you put everything I, I in there. It was, it was a big deal that, 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 that you know, that the, the, the children's you know, pajama manufacturers put, put the flame retardant in. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, you remember they they used to not do that in Halloween costumes, and all these kids caught on fire when they came to your door in their costume, went in the jack o' lantern, and all of that. So everything now is flame retardants for kids. Um, I should intoxicant. What would that be? Alcohol. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then remember, toxins are what come from nature. Certain things out there are toxic. You know, heavy metals. Mm -hmm. And a toxicant would be pesticides. We make those. Mm -hmm. All right. The next question, I'm going to ask you, to, I'll give you the next question. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. What is your okay. supplement routine? Oh, God. Okay. Well, you don't um, have to answer that if you don't want to. You know, I, I can provide that to people and understand that I don't take all of the supplements every day because there's so many of them. I probably have 25 different things, but frankly, I don't know if my um, urolithin A levels are that high, right? So I, I take a supplement for that. I take Acromancia mucinophila as one of my probiotics. The probiotics that I take are Lactobacillus bifidobacter and Saccharomyces bouillardii, right? Which is more of an antifungal type of thing. Um, also, uh, I take glucosamine and chondroitin. I also take a product that our company makes that is called Essential Daily Balance. It's got a little bit of the CBD in there to help balance the cannabinoid system. And it, it also has arginine in there, precursor to nitric oxide. So it gets some blood flow. My, my ultimate favorite, um, let's say supplement is PEA which I take, that's palmitil ethanolamide. Um, that is an anti-inflammatory and works great for pain. Uh, we've also got phenylalanine in there, also got, uh, you know, uh, some other things like that that helps, you know, I, I believe that we all can use some anti-inflammatory action. Circulation, right? If you don't have good circulation, I don't care how many supplements you take, it's not getting everywhere. So we need that circulation. And of course, what do you do for that? Well, some type of exercise and all of that. And as they say, uh, our blood's pumped all over our body because we have a heart. Well, our lymph isn't pumped all over our body. We don't have a lymph pump. So you got to move. You got to exercise a little bit to clear out some of these toxins. So that's, you know, one of the things that I also take. Um, I take a resveratrol uh, a couple times a week. Um, now, berberine, as I mentioned 25 times, I do take that every day. Um, as far as drugs go, I take a little bit of thyroid here and there. That's it. I, I take virtually nothing else like that. I do take some, some DIM, um, um, pregnenolone, that kind of DHEA, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, I, I'm trying to picture you know, kind of what, what my cabinet is. I, I've taken pictures of this and given it to people so, so they can see, um, you know, one of those homocysteine things, B6, B12, methylfolate, uh, a couple times a week on that. Like I said, I, I pretty much don't take everything every day. And then of course, you know, as, as we age, right, you know, you, you, you got to take some prostate stuff. I do that. And then um, when I was at, at SC um, uh, County Hospital way back when I got hepatitis, right, from somebody there. So I, um, I I always take some, you know, liver support stuff, milk thistle, and that kind of thing. And, you know, I mean, that's pretty much it. Oh, oh, uh, um, I do take a couple of times a week, I take a combination of spirulina and uh, chlorella capsule, 
to kind of help detox some metals. And I, uh, and I always say, you know, hey, eat cilantro, put cilantro on everything, maybe except cereal, but I don't think people should eat cereal. Uh, put it on your salads, you know, to, to detox that kind of thing. Um, that That's absolutely fantastic. Um, vitamin C, I take ascorbic acid, you know, um, and then I take, uh, although I, I think my fiber intake is pretty good, I do take a fiber capsule at night. And that 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 kind of that kind of covers it. So, if I if I may if I may doc real quick. Sure. Um. You know we've talked about what you're going through, what I'm going through, and if you had to like send to the veterans and the responders a type of protocol that can help them detox. Mm -hmm. I do all the above. I do the, you know, the, the minerals. I do the mushrooms. I do the superfoods. I do all the above. You can imagine working under Dr. Clearfield after eight years. Right. Right. So with all the above, um, what do you think are the top detoxifying agents that I need to get to these veterans yeah. who have been so drugged and so medicated and so vaccinated? You know and what, Joel? I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned that because I skipped a couple of things. I also take um, liposomal glutathione for right. that, and right. then uh, NAC and acetylcysteine, the precursor to glutathione. I take that. And then this uh, spirulina chlorella combination. And then again, um, I, I can't extol the virtues of berberine enough. Ascorbic acid is going to help detox you. Alpha lipoic acid, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there, so there are so many things to detox. And then as far as supplements go, um, I haven't done it yet because I take these things, you know, more individually. But I, I keep hearing about um, athletic greens that AG1 right. you know, having all kinds of great stuff in it. With, and and all, oh, forgot to, tell you, to take a, a multivitamin B complex mineral thing too. Yeah, right. there's a bunch of stuff I forgot to mention. But that's why I said I, I have a lot of them, but I don't take them every day. Um, um, some of them I do. Some of them are once a week, some are twice a week. Some of them are when I feel like it. You know, because I, how do you, how do you know if you're deficient in certain things? You you just don't know. Well, I, I'm not going to take that chance. I'm going to make sure that I try to optimize everything. So for the vets, I actually can get you through a company that I use called DSS Doctor Supplement Store, um, a protocol for detoxification, and and it, it it's two phases. It's one is like a general thing, and one is a a heavy hitter for you know, people that were exposed to the burn pits or, or way back when Agent Orange or whatever it is, you know, we, we got to get that out of ourselves. Also, um, infrared sauna yeah. works yeah. well for detox, ozone, ozone therapy. In our center, we had, um, we had an ozone sauna. We also did intravenous ozone and all of that kind of stuff. That's phenomenal to detox. And again, infrared sauna. Um, heat you up from the inside and it'll help you detox. So, so there's, there's, there's not what I say, there's not a magic bullet for this. It's more or less a magic shotgun. There's a lot of things that help that people should, should do keeping in mind that if you're going to detox and somebody's extremely toxic, you probably need supervision a, and you need to go slowly because you don't want to make somebody sicker. As you know, remember as you as you pull some of these things out, especially the the metals out of um, your cells, right? You have to do what we call depuration, not just detoxification, but depuration. Depuration is the process of getting the toxins out of the body. So if you're doing a detox thing, you should take chlorella. Uh, I'm sorry, charcoal capsules. Um, uh, uh, bentonite clay, things like that, to get this stuff out of the body. That's 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 pretty critical. Okay, so it, it's it's a program. It, it's not just a a single thing to do. Uh, and and again, that's where I think 
for this group, one of the benefits is because they, you know, you're not going to run into someone who says, calls their society and says, hey, you know, Dr. So-and-so, you know, Dr. Clearfield, man, he's not qualified to do what I do. Well, you know, if, if you're talking about being an OBGYN, well, maybe so. But on this kind of thing. I've already done that. Okay. Detoxification is the way. Wrong specialty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, um, Joel, I, I hope I, I kind of answered that for you. I mean, there, there's, no, a, you, there's a lot. You did. Get. No, no, you did. Um, you have absolutely answered it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, Joel also asks, have you thought about adding any, any like uh, good fats to the Boca salad? You know, I've thought about adding other things to it. But what I've kind of tried to do is leave, let that stand on its own. Um, at well, one time I thought, you know, the greatest thing I could add in here that would taste so good would be pineapple. I haven't done that yet. Um, and, and no, but what I do, eh, good or bad, a lot of times when I eat that, I will have a spoonful of, of uh, raw organic almond butter. Yeah, that's there's some fats in there, and I do eat nuts and seeds like crazy. I eat raw, all kinds of raw nuts mm -hmm. to to get you know some of the fats. Oh, and I, I, again, another some. I mean, I, I take um, you know a fish oil supplement, um, either Nordic Naturals or Dutch Harbor. Again, I don't get paid by any of these guys. Um, you know that kind of thing because the omegas are absolutely critical, as we know. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So, so fats there. Um, I cook <laughs> and use that term loosely, um, with avocado oil. Um, I just don't like avocados, but I'll tell you the avocados, you eat an avocados. That's one of the best things you can do. They're just going to give you the fats and oils there. That that's fantastic. I mean, you can put avocados on a salad. Oh, you're good to go. Joel asked about mangosteen. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Xanthone. I don't know. Mangosteen. Generally, that's great. Um, if I, I think it's one of those things, help me out with this. If anybody knows one of those things that if you have a latex allergy, you got to stay away from. I think you're right. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, Dr. Cindy will chime in. But mangosteen has been proven to be a huge uh, immunoprotectant. And right now it's in a pill form and a, uh, I believe, a, a supplement form. And CTFO increased the absorption of the form by like 5,000% oh, because God. they went so legal. It's absolutely insane. So they call it twist and miss. It's an exosan. It's pretty insane. Wow. So it's pretty huge. And I, it's 40% of their sales. And I just, you know, I think it's, you know, it's what we need right now. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, if it's anything you're going to help with the detox, yeah, definitely so. And I'm sure it does other things. It's one of those foods provided by Mother Nature. And, and these things never just do one thing. That's what's so beautiful about the whole system, right? Unlike the way, you know, drugs are made, um, uh, apparently, um, metformin came from a plant originally and i think that stuff came out in the 50s it's when they first did all the work on it uh and and so the reductionist theory the monomolecular therapy therapy that that big pharma wants us all to practice is find what you think the active ingredient is and then let's make that you know let's throw a methyl group on it because we can't patent something that god made so, you know, throw a methyl group on there or something like that, and then we can make a drug out of it and, and we can sell it and because we know that this chemical uh, does us some good. And they don't understand that, you know, that you really need the plant as a whole and all of that. Mm -hmm. So as a disclaimer, I'm trying to become a MLM type participant in CTFO. But it looks like they increased the absorption, Dr. Quinn, by 5,000%. Amazing. They went uh, uh, sublingual instead of pill. 
or uh, powder form. And so we're getting this antioxidant that's absolutely off the chart. And no, that's, that's phenomenal. It's 40% of their cells. Yeah, and, and you know what? It, if something works, great. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm not to, to tell anybody, oh, you know, don't do that. I, again, you, you, you ask 10 people and, you know, half of them are going to say, oh, acupuncture is the greatest thing in the world. And the other half are going to say, ah, oh, that, that's stupid. Yeah, what? If it works, go ahead and do it. What I would just wonder on that, Joel, is how long do you stay on something like that? Agree, agree. Oh, I forgot meat. Okay. Yeah, what about uh, another another one of those barbed wire topics? Um, as we all know, there are certain amino acids in meat that you can't get from uh, vegetable protein sources. But if you're a vegetarian, vegan, or whatever, you can boost the plant proteins with the the protein powders and things that I showed you there. You can get everything out of there. It's leucine, I think, is one of the main ones. And theoretically, you need two and a half uh, grams of that at every meal to maintain you know, good protein homeostasis to build and all of that. And remember what I said with the meat. Um, if you are eating feedlot cattle, right, they're eating garbage. And if you're eating the, you know, the, the grass fed out there, grass fed is one thing, but the, the wild ones, the free range are the ones that are eating 200 species of plants and not just eating the ones that they got from the feed store, right? It, it, there's, there's a whole thing about that because you're eating what they ate and the meat itself, um, you can get obviously, you know, grass fed and all that kind of stuff you know, humanely raised and that kind of thing. Um, you can also, I think it's called Maui something or other, you can get organic uh, organ meats and there's nothing better than organ meats. Liver and things like that are, are phenomenal for you, but we don't do that. Burger King doesn't serve that, so we don't eat it. Uh, what about coenzyme Q10? Yeah, that was on one of those things there. Um, they found out that statins rip that out of your body. So anybody on a statin needs to be on CoQ10. Well, it, it, they say that's in virtually all cells to help catalyze their, their cellular reactions. So yeah, definitely. And I, I forgot to mention that too. I take that a couple of times a week. <laughs> Ay, mm -hmm. um, just a, a comment from our uh, integrative veterinarian, Dr. Siegel. I she loves living in her food forest. She made soup from the garden, from pesto for dinner, picked mangoes, uh, Barbados cherries, and some Sunam cherries, star fruit, just tonight. So, oh God! Now, where does she live, and how do I get there? I think she's in Florida. She's in Florida, North. Oh, Atlanta. I can't do that. And uh, yeah, Doctor Zinni, great seeing you again. Yeah, I. I he oh, had he to dropped drop, off. He had to drop <laughs> off. So. Yeah, I, I know him from San Luis Obispo. Oh, okay. Um, uh, a lot of thank yous, uh, uh, please send all the charts. Um, you know what, if you send them to me, uh, yeah. if you can send me either the slides or the charts, um, I'll put it on our website and then everybody can get it. Okay. That'll Perfect. If that's okay with you. Oh, you know, that's fine. Uh, that's what this is all about. I, I can't stress enough. You know, my goal is for the, the practitioners to, to say, you know, I, I don't, I don't treat everybody as a specialty, you know, as we all learn in school organ systems, and this is what the kidney does, and it's not connected to anything else, you know, no, all of this stuff helps everybody, and, and I truly believe that with the practices, you know, of you guys, um, the, the more you can help people, the better it is, and we, as we talked about before this, you know, we we need uh, the the regulatory people to understand that there are things that can be done that should be done by knowledgeable practitioners uh, that that you know that can weed through the information that you find on YouTube and ferret out the good. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between organic and non-organic soy? Not organic and non-organic soil. Soy, S O Y. Oh, soy. Oh, good question. Um, organic doesn't mean perfect, and there are some. There's a thought out there that if organic is 
as high as 50 to 75% better than non-organic, great. Um, soy is grown as a monocrop in this country. Soy, wheat, corn, those are monocrops um, uh, subsidized by the government. Uh, I mean, crop insurance. And uh, they're, they're grown in nutrient depleted soils. And so if you get something that's not organic, then the, the pesticides and whatnot that were used also destroy the microbiome of the soil. And those microbes are needed to provide nutrients to the plants. And plants, believe it or not, we all think that it's a one-way street from the soil to the plant. It is not. Plants send the signals out to the soils when they need something. That's how they proliferate so well, right? If they need uh, magnesium, right? Healthy soils with healthy microbes can increase the magnesium. So if you're getting something that is organic, you have a pretty good chance that it was grown in something that uh, is going to be more healthy. Also, if organic means to us that they weren't sprayed with herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, your nutrients are there. Those things destroy the bugs, but they also destroy the nutrients in the plant. They're, they're not completely without harm to the plant. Pectisol C is, is excellent. It blocks galactin-3, which is a heavy metal chelator and an and Wonderful. Hygienic. So, okay. Um, lots of thanks for great uh, presentations. Dr. Siegel writes that she's in Florida, which we knew, and excellent talk. Okay. Oh, good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Do you want to make any comments about your your products, your company? Um, again, we're not CME, so so we can. Oh yeah, no. The, um, I would encourage everyone to go on to prismearth.com. Prism is two m's p r i s m m e a r t h all one word dot com to see our our cannabinoid products, which we call the cannaceuticals, right? The cannabinoids with pharmaceuticals in there, and then I have my own personal. Um, what do you call a wellness consulting business? Um, I am extremely uh, happy to help anyone set up, gosh, do I use the term full service? A full service type of practice. If you want to start out learning about how to begin with detox when someone comes in and then moving to diet and supplements and all of that, I've, I've got an entire program that I have put into uh, physicians' offices that works pretty well. There's a little charge on that, but not much. Um, and then also I, I help with the detox thing, you know, because there's, you know, it, it, a common thing is if somebody takes a, a chelator, they do a, a metal test and they didn't have a lot of arsenic and then they do some chelation. And yeah, of course, the, you know, lead and mercury went down, but why'd the arsenic go up? You know, you know, it's all back to the PKA and all of these you know, chemical reactions. So it, it can be tricky, but I, I kind of take people through step by step. So I can do that if uh, anybody wants to add that to their practice. Last year, I did this with some chiropractors, you know, putting that into their practice because, they, you know, they're on board with things they can sell um, where it doesn't require prescriptions. So, you know, there's that. And then, so you can get a hold of me at Robert at KohanaRx.com. If you want any information on this stuff, we can, we can talk about that. But again, I, I would really hope that if you're at all interested in the canaceuticals, um, go to prismearth.com. If I may real quick, doc. Yeah. Um, to you and Dr. Clairfield, you know, we're very, very sick in America. Yeah. Our doctors are sick, our psychiatrists, our psychologists, everybody's sick. It's absolutely overwhelming. Yep. You know, I do mushrooms and I do superfoods and I do Good. real butter and I do real uh, uh, coconut oil. Yeah. Um, 
and I'm dealing with veterans who are killing themselves at about 44 to 50 veterans a day. With that being said, how do you think I attacked this? With Dr. Clearfield. Uh, you know what? If you would have asked me this a couple of years ago, I had a completely different answer. But now, um, social media is right. a way to go. If you can get the information out. See, you need information and then the education and then the implementation. And with, with Dr. Clearfield and you, you probably, Joel, have the reach to get some information out. The best thing to do is, is, again, you get the information out and then the education, and that now is being done very effectively with little YouTube videos and all of that. People are going to that. And keep in mind, we're not just talking, I mean, a lot of what I talked about was aging and chronic disease. Uh, there's a study being done in Seattle by Dr. Jonathan Wright um, and Meridian Valley Labs. I don't know if it's over or, or what the status is, but they were finding that the that the 23 year old men up there have extremely low testosterone levels. Dr. Clearfield, you know, you might have run across this due to the mercury yeah. toxicity. So this works for young people too. Um, you know, not not all veterans are, are old guys, right? Um, to get this information out to help people, uh, I, I really think the best thing that you can do, uh, besides anything you're doing with flyers or, you know, office, you know, type of stuff, I, I think doing the social media thing is very, very helpful because there's some yahoos out there that are getting some information out, whether it's good or bad, and they're making tons of money on it. And the reason I say that is because if you're doing that, then, hey, then you can donate to, you know, Wounded Warriors or whatever you want to do, you know, with some of that revenue. Uh, but th that, that stuff works. Um, people don't watch the evening news as much as they used to. They're getting their information online from social media, good or bad. If you've got good info, I think that's a good way to promote it. And as a matter of fact, I mean, that's what we're doing now. Um, the people texting me are the marketers that I have uh, for at Prism Earth, you know, trying to update me on what the status is and how many hits and who's coming in and who's looking and where we should give some information and all that kind of stuff. Um, people need it. And, and that would be my suggestion. And again, you have access to a lot of these vets. Uh, so, you know, spread the word. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so Jorge uh, asks, um, in Latin America, we eat a lot of white cheese direct from the farm. Is that still bad for the, for us? Uh, cheese doesn't do well with me, but cheese does well with a lot of people. Now, you're going to find some fats in there and some, some good stuff in there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I, I don't know that that is bad. What do they say? Everything in moderation. I mean, you, you know, as long as you don't live on it, mm -hmm. it it's going to work. I mean, they, you know, what you, are you going to tell an Inuit not to eat blubber? No, they've evolved by doing that and they're getting their nutrients and they're they're surviving. So these guys, you know, Latin America, they do a lot of things that, uh, you know, we might find strange or, or uh, unbelievable. But if, if it's providing health and it's not harming you, sure. And, and, you know, again, you know, balance. I mean, hopefully you're eating, you know, vegetables and stuff too. Mm -hmm. What about like, you know, these strictly meat diets or, or um, you know, paleo, you know, the keto style, you know, where it's, it's, it's all, you know, it's all either fat and, and you know, and, and protein. Um, okay, well. Remember that, you know, there's two sources of energy. Well, three, if you consider there's, you know, there's glucose provides energy for cells. So does glutamine, which we can't get away from. But, but then the other source of energy for our cells are fats. And so it's always better to go with low glucose, meaning low sugars and starches. The carnivore diet, again, go back to the haircut thing, you know what's best is a carnivore diet best well it is for jordan peterson 
but hey, may not be for other people. I mean, he and his daughter, and I hope you know who he is, but uh, they they have cured allergies. She had um, joint replacement as a teenager due to inflammation in her joints. She got off of all foods and started eating a strict carnivore diet and now is healthy as a horse. Would I do that? No, I probably wouldn't do that. But hey, it works. Uh, I'm a meat proponent. I think you should eat eat meat. And that, I mean, and that includes fish and chicken and turkey and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Fish especially. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Any uh, any kind of summary or last words? Uh, no, uh, other than the fact that I will get this uh, to you. Okay. And and you can do whatever you want. Post it. Print the charts. Whatever yeah. anybody needs. Yeah. And again, if you have yeah. specific things or you want to yeah. add or modify your practice, um, I can help with that. And then again, the endocannabinoids on Prism Earth. Uh, that's about all I have. I hope. I guess in summation. I hope that I've given some information there and shown some ways that we can improve health, that we don't have to only attack illness, that we can provide some wellness. Okay. So all, all of our, um, uh, all of our uh, webinars are on aosrd.org slash webinars. And for some reason, most of them seem to be showing up on YouTube now. Um, under my name, I didn't actually do that, but my my web person who, who helps us with it. That's great. That that's great. And 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 uh, Bill, if you do what I call those little uh, YouTube shorts, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, with a a big topic, right? You know, do one of those things. Mm -hmm. You start getting your face out there. Uh, post on LinkedIn. Yeah. Like I said, I don't, you know, I'm old. I don't know. Uh, it's YouTube. It, it should say YouTube. I, I, I don't know. I didn't even know. I didn't even try it. Somehow I have almost a thousand uh, uh, subscribers. Just like every day I see that four, four or five so-and-so subscribe to me. So did we that, lose That's so wonderful. All you have to do is get somebody with a, a cell phone, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's the, right. you know, the yeah. rustic way to yeah. do it. Here's, Come here's in, my guy, and, my guy right under you here with his. He's the guy with the cell phone. Okay, <laughs> go in there and and Joel, just say, Doctor Clearfield, um, what can you tell me about um, uh, young males with low testosterone? Yeah. And then you do a minute mm -hmm. on that. Yeah, we had one today actually. So there, there you go. Twenty three years. Uh, ago. You know, I had a patient, and and you, you start out by saying, "Well, I had a patient that this and that." My name is Doctor William Clearfield. I am such and such. Right? You start out with the the hook. And then tell them who you are, your credentials, and then what happened. And you and you do that a bunch of times and just keep posting them out there. And pretty soon you'll really increase it. Cause that that's that's how you kind of introduce it to people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like showing the, the the cover of a book, and then that kind of will stimulate them to read the book. Mm -hmm. Okay, terrific. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Quinn. And please uh you know, thank you guys for the opportunity I appreciate we always it. ask we always you know we always say you know if, if you do a good job and you're competent then we we we, we always want to have you back for more <laughs> so and I, I like to say so i'm not very handy around the house so nobody ever asked me to help twice so <laughs> <laughs> so we hope to have you back and please okay. we're here every tuesday at this time great uh, five o'clock pacific eight o'clock eastern next week uh our, our good friend Stephen Hartman will be back. Um, oh. he's, going to be, he's going to be talking about, um, uh, so we've already had a talk about this. He's going to give us a follow-up on the his uh, prostate cancer project um, cool. using, uh, using um, lactoferrin and, you know, one, one of the most uh, reviled substances on the face of the earth, ivermectin. So, oh, there you go. Right, so... So uh, tune in next week for next week's misinformation. Same time, same station. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you guys for thank the opportunity. So much. Appreciate that. Very, very appreciative. Okay, everybody, good night. Anybody have any last last words? Thank questions? You. Excellent. Comments? Thank you. Thank you very right. much. How's, thank how's, you, how's, John. This is my other right hand person here. You can tell. You can tell. I, I have a style that I hang out with. I don't yeah. Have, yeah. I was going to say. You know that 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 one haircut thing is kind of thrown out right yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we call them the beards of knowledge these guys <laughs> amen amen and yeah. it's not it's, it's not steven it's stefan stefan yeah, yeah that's stephan. right Star. yeah and, and and by the way um this is the first time in a long time i've actually had a shirt on just so you know 
Okay. Well, good. It good. is actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we feel honored. So there you go. Yeah, you guys are important. Any any word on the medic? Anything new at the medical school this this week, John? Everything's absolutely solid. The family practice director comes back from vacation next week, and we're going to have a long talk. All right. So everything everything's wonderful. And uh, Dr. Quinn, I'm going to get in touch with you by email. Okay. Uh, I love what you're talking about and the way you do it, your attitude. And uh, we're trying to get some things out there with an East Coast conference. So I'd like to speak with you about that too. Sure. And uh, and like you said, Dustin uh, Sulak has always been a big help with us. Yeah. 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 No, that's great. He he knows his stuff. Yeah. Okay. Let's not forget the uh, uh, contractual, you know, process with the veterans. Okay, we won't. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Anybody else, Doctor Siegel, if you're still there, you 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 got anything for us? Right. I don't know if she's still around. Get a dog, oh, guys. Man, you got to have a pet. All right, That's everybody amazing. else, um, thank you. Uh, Jorge, thank you so much. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Um, Dr. Nario, um, everybody else who's still still on with us. I'll see you next week. Um, anybody has any any um, topics they want to uh, bring up, please let me know. And, uh, you know, we have Endless Tuesday. So, and Dr. Quinn, one last time, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, well, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll talk to you okay. shortly. All right. Good, Good night, night, everybody. Good night. Good night. You're looking good, John. Oh, yeah. Hey, this was such a good talk. Yeah, I know. Man, right on the money, bullseye guy mm -hmm. with I common know. sense. Yeah. So, um, you know, if we're going to do this East Coast thing, we might want to throw in peptides and somebody like Dr. Quinn and you, Bill. Okay. Hormones, nutrition. Think, when, when, is, when is Omed? Uh, 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 the end of October, I think we'll, we'll find the hotel right across the street. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> uh, oh man, I gave up on them for now because yeah, uh, me too. So, so right. maybe maybe so, next year. In case you guys don't know, Doctor Quinn lost his license. He he gave it up. California was just too much, and he was like, you know, f you. Wow. He, wouldn't, he wouldn't do it so he just gave it up and he turned into the cbd realm and went professional and i don't know i respect him man. just and saying he, and he's working with dustin i understand yeah apparently yeah. He, he's talked with them i'm trying to get uh, uh laura langmeyer laura langmeyer was uh she's my coach she's part of the uh uh I can't think of his name. Uh, damn. She's pretty huge in the investment realm. And she just bought 23 acres of uh, hemp farm in um, Nevada. And she's pretty huge. So something grows in Nevada. I didn't think anything grew here. <laughs> well, Hawthorne is one of the top ammo dumps in america no they're one of the hugest dumps in america mm -hmm. and that's where she bought her 23 27 acres whatever it is mm -hmm. she's going to grow some you know marijuana mm -hmm. because of the you know what's going on in america mm -hmm. we'll see what happens okay all right all right time to go so thanks everybody um Raphael, good to see you again and as genevieve mcpherson that's a new name for us um uh, welcome and please come Agreed. back and uh, let us know how you found us and uh, everybody else. We'll see you again uh, next week. Same time, same station. We'll see you again. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.